My father had enlisted when he was 14 in the Cameron Highlanders, um, but his sister dobbed him in so he didn't go to France and he ultimately flew uh, as the uh, navigator come radio operator in blimps, sinking submarines. Uh, but my other uncles uh, had served in, mostly in the Cameron Highlanders, which is a Glasgow regiment. And uh, my mother's uh, brothers uh, served in the Navy, and one was killed at uh, Gallipoli. The reason I became an engineer fundamentally was uh, going up to put on the table what, what corps we wanted to go. And I was going up to put infantry, and uh, this, the BSM came and said to me, hey, listen, Hutch, you know, you could go to university if you do engineering. I said, what the hell do I want to go to university for? But the long and the short was then I switched it. I made it engineers first and, uh, and infantry uh, second. I was a garrison engineer in, uh, in uh, Kirae, actually at Hero, the, the joining town. And one day the CO called me in and he said, Hutchison, you're going to uh, Korea. I didn't ask him when. And two days later I was in a car going down onto a plane. Well, I got down to, the, to catch a plane and the plane had left. So I spoke to an American. He said, oh, there's the mail train plane going. So they put me on the mail plane and I lay on the, all the packs and what have you. I arrived in the battalion and I'd... Uh, got a tin trunk and put all the engineer books, like volume one, volume two, volume three, and so on, and, uh, and a few tools. So I get to the CP and they dump the, the tin box at the bottom of the hill and they go up to meet the CO. And all he said to me, is that your trunk down there? Yes, sir. I said, yeah, I'm in the trouble now, you know. Anyway, I, I go up to the company uh, CP and uh, the company commander there said, uh, oh, you go up tomorrow to, to your platoon. It was fairly late in the day. Anyway, I go up the next morning to my platoon area and it consisted of, of, of one bunker, which was just big enough for me and the sergeant to live in. And the soldiers were living in the communication trench, which when it rained got full of water. And uh, by day, the enemy fired at our hill, it was Hill 159, because behind us was a mortar platoon. And I had a, an Aboriginal uh, corporal, and we used to watch him, because he could hear the shells coming before we could. And that was, you know, a situation, a rainy period. Uh, at night time, the guys would go around the front to dig their weapon pits, come back, and the enemy would blow them off uh, the next day. And then we moved from there. What, what had happened is the, that company had moved forward, D Company had moved forward, uh, and uh, this had been one of the platoon positions that I was sitting on till they get the defences going. And I went back, to, went back to my proper position, which was the guard guarding the uh, battalion headquarters. It was from there I started to go out. Point anger rang me up. I said, hey, you've got to go out and find this... Uh, Kingsman, a uh, corporal that uh, got killed in that action last night. So I was given a dog to take me out and find the, the body. Well, the dog found a smell of bodies, but they were Chinese. And he dragged me over into no man's land, across to China, yeah. So we didn't find the, find the body, uh, but one of my mates, in fact, my son from Duntroon went out and found it the next night. So that was that introduction. From then on, uh, in that position, I, uh, well, I laid a few minefields on, on, on that position. But from then on, I started to... Uh, get, during day, really went out on my own. But at night time, I went out with a signaller uh, sort of protection. We moved from that position onto a position called Yongdong. Yongdong was a high pinnacle standing out and between Yongdong and the hook on the other side of the river was the Samachon River. The Samachon River is the river that uh, goes up into uh, China with a tributary over the front line. 
Incidentally, that was the route that the spies from North Korea came down and it's the route that the, uh, our allied spies went up. We're in the Xiongdong position and, and then when I really started to walk, uh, walk the minefields, uh, the first experience I had was that uh, I went down to the, uh, to, the, to the river and walking along the bank expecting to find the fence up here and the fence was down here. And uh, secondly, the mines were out there. I just managed to see the, the three prongs stick up, so I managed, just managed to see it. Uh, so that was the start of plotting uh, the minefields in Yongdong. The other job I got from there was to, uh, the, uh, they'd observed, uh, artillery in particular had observed the enemy had built what appeared to be a, trank, a tank obstacle. They dug a trench from the Samachon River up to the hills, uh, obviously with the intention of stopping the Americans with their tanks coming up because this was a wide enough for a, a major attack to take place. The hook, by the way, is quite famous. That was part of the vital ground. And when we were on Yongdong, the Black Watt took over from the Americans on, on that position. And all day and all night they were getting shelled. And if you look at the casualties, it's unbelievable that, uh, with the, the Black Watch. I was told to, uh, to go out and uh, check on this tank obstacle. I went out with a protection with about a section of men. I propped them and uh, took one, uh, one soldier with me. We crossed the, uh, the river, it's up to, up to here somewhere, and uh, I started doing this stunt and I couldn't find it. And I thought, gee whiz. So anyway, I get up on top of the bank and of course then I'm silhouetted uh, if the enemy were watching. So I come along and then I found a trench and the pair of us got down it and I measured it up to see whether it was the right size to be an anti-tank obstacle. And uh, I said, oh, I, better, I better walk along this and see how far it goes or what it has. Well, I started to go along, and had gone a, you know, five or ten minutes and suddenly I see a bridge across it with a guard, with a Chinese guard in it. So I muttered to the soldier, uh, I, I think we'd better go back. He said, I think we ought to go too, sir. <laughs> well, anyway, we go back and uh, this time crossing the river, the spot we got was about that high and got through. And uh, as I got back to my firm base, the shelling started. So the enemy had spotted me. But what he did was fired at the normal crossing place, which I didn't know. And there was a fellow, uh, George... So, so lengthy. He had a patrol there apparently just in case I got into trouble. Well, he copped the guns. I didn't cop anything and we pulled in. The other problem I had was my own troops firing at me. Uh, There's an incident when I, in fact, I'd been, been up to 227 and a um, patrol was at the bottom of the uh, of Surrey Hills and they were to pick me up and go up the hill. Well, I'm leading up the hill being the captain, and there's a standing patrol uh, into A Company, the left forward company, and suddenly this guy goes, <laughs> and then bullets are going over my head, and I'm screaming out, cut that flaming thing out, and the patrol disappeared uh, down the thing. And I got real angry with him afterwards because I'd found a Bangalore torpedo, uh, which was, a, was a, actually a Japanese uh, thing. But I tossed that, and uh, so I never brought that home. But anyway, I get up there, and Jimmy Norrie, who was the company commander, had come out to see if everything was going OK for me to be extracted. And uh, apparently he said to the soldier, give us your gun, you're staying out there all night. So he left him out in that. After 12 months, you retired. Well, I went to, um, I went to Japan, and uh, into the, the, there was a... a, a a British engineer regiment, fundamentally an, uh, an Australian engineer regiment. And then I um, had a month's leave in, in Japan, went up, uh, uh, you know, the uh, mountains and what have you. Then I came back to Australia, went to a, a National Service Battalion, 19 Battalion. I was there about uh, a week and the engineer in chief discovered I was in Australia and said, oh, 
he's got to go over to the School of Military Engineering to become the IRE. So I went to the engineering school to be a, an instructor um, and uh, became a major, temporary major, and uh, was there for about 12 months and I was sent to Victoria Barracks. And the Victoria Barracks as the, uh, as the senior staff officer to the chief engineer and the message came and said, Hutch, you've got to go on a plane and go to, go to England and train with the Royal Marines. So uh, two, two people have been sent to, two engineer, two officers and two warrant officers have been sent to England, near, England to train with the Royal Marines to form the first commando companies in Australia, Mac Grant and uh, another chap. The other chap was drowned and so I replaced, uh, replaced him. Uh, so I spent 12 months training with the Marines and did exercises in, in uh, Norway and so on. I, I went to Malaya in, in 56, but it, in, um, I remember, probably in 54, 53, you might remember the, uh, the governor, I think it was, got uh, in his car, got uh, blown up. Uh, well, at that stage, uh, the uh, communists were very active but not in, not necessarily in the mountains, but down on the uh, in the Kalakangsa and places like that down on on the coast, uh, and a couple of the leaders down there were very very aggressive, uh, uh, killing even semi friendly sort of people. Uh, but by fifty six, uh, they'd been pushed out because now by this time we got an Australian battalion and British battalions and formed brigade down on the on the open open country, whereas and hence we were up uh, on the track trying to stop any more people coming coming down. Uh, so it was a, a different sort of operation from the early ones. So our role was to stop uh, the communists being able to come down into the mainland and influence the natives in the first instance and then move out into the, uh, the populated areas. Uh, it's all in, in, in virgin jungle. We go for a, um, a week usually uh, and carry a week's worth of rations, which were usually eight in four days, so we didn't have anything to eat for the rest of the week. Uh, uh, and you, if you wanted, we had to go down to, you're travelling on the ridge, you go down to the water to, uh, to pick up water and bring it back up the hill. Um, there's another reason to go down to, to the water is to find out which way the stream runs because you've got a map in a virgin area and uh, after a while you, you start to lose direction. So one way to do it is to go down and find out what, which way the water's going in the creek and turn your map around because you've been going the wrong way. But when I, after I'd finished with the, uh, with the commando company, I uh, went back to the, the school for six months, then I went to staff college. And after staff college, went as the engineer instructor in the Jungle Training Centre and then uh, became the the AAN QMG in South Australia. We got a bit of a wind. We, we prepared, actually prepared for the Vietnam War. We had a bit of a wind. One of the reasons I knew that was that uh, in about June, before one battalion had been formed to go over, I got a lot of money. And so we started to build up uh, what we thought was the scaling list uh, for a, uh, a division. And that stuff was there, so when the war broke out, we had we stuck it on the ships and off, off it went. Turned it into a big business, uh, invented things. Uh, the uh, army huts, are called the Hutchison huts, I, d I designed those, uh, Lysart huts and mobile hospitals and what have you. Uh, uh, I might say that, you know, I just did these things. The best war memorial I, I, I've ever seen is a big, a big rock. In fact, in, in Korea, in front of the field squadron, that's the best memorial. I think someone has picked that up and brought it back to Australia, but anyway, that's the war memorial. I, I'm hoping that uh, with the library section, the, the public will come and uh, there'll be rapport backward and, and forward. And you're liable to pick up someone there whose father did this and the father did that. Uh, in that in, in that open space, the common common space, uh, 
And one of the advantages to me, of course, I'm handling the books going through, so I'm picking up things uh, uh, from a book I didn't even know, it, know existed. So it's a mixture of books, and it's not easy to get much out of a book, but you get a lot out of an individual. Just hope they don't want to talk for about four hours or something like that, you know. <laughs>